want to show you just a quick, well, quick is a relative term, but a way to create CSS3 transitions to create things like you see right here, just kind of a simple hover and show something, okay? And to show you that it's not going to work well in IE9 and lower, but in IE9 and lower, we can make it so that the content just shows essentially, so they don't have the interactive content. To start out here is what we can do. What I actually did was I created a div, and you can do this on just about any content you want, okay? Don't, don't take just a div uh, to be an example, but you're going to see right here I've got a div, and I've got a div inside of a div. So I put two one inside of the other one, I guess you could say. The initial div, called box, I just keep it simple, I got a class. I put it just a simple width, height, the background image, put some padding, made a position of relative, we'll have to use that. Overflow hidden needs to be there, something to that effect anyway. And then the inner box, the div that we put inside, will have some properties, you know, like a border if you want. It'll have a width, it'll probably have padding, whatever you want to do. The key here is to put the position absolute, get it out of the way. So we're going to get it out of there. By bottom, we're going nine, mi minus 60 picks, which means it's going to hide it out here. If we didn't have overflow hidden out here, let me take that out, I could comment it out, you would see this instead. But if we put the overflow hidden in there, it'll actually hide it. There we go. Then what we do is we go in and say, okay, well, let's set up some properties. Let's set up some transition properties so that when we hover over this thing, it's going to change the properties, I guess you could say, for the inner box, for that little box right there. So what we do is with transitions is we want to put in what's called essentially the transition uh, property into the object that's going to move or do something. So the inner box is what's going to change essentially. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and we can use shorthand for this if we want to. We can use longhand. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to do the shorthand because I think it just is a little bit easier. And the actual, like the standard out here is called transition. So if I put transition, what we can then do is we can kind of lump a bunch of different things in here. Uh, that are statements that can say, here's what the transition is going to do. It's sort of like putting a background and putting the background shortcut or shorthand rather of color, the image, no repeat center, center. We're putting a bunch of things together. In transition, we have what's called a property. So we could do something like uh, put in, I don't know, um, a, a property of top, okay? Or like a property of background. And we're trying to tell it what we're going to change about this object. And then what we can do is we can put something like the duration. Like how long is it going to take to go from like the background color of white to background color of red? One S is one second, obviously. You can do something like uh, milliseconds if you want, MS. We can do that. And notice I'm putting a space here. We'll put a space. And then what we can do is we can put in something like a timing function. A timing function is a, uh, an ease, an ease in, an ease out. You can see a bunch of them listed here. I might do something like, uh, I don't know, ease out. Okay. Put a space. And then we're going to put one of our last things that we're going to use because there are other properties that we can set here or other things we can set but not all browsers support them. So the other one is called delay. The delay is set at zero, which means it's going to happen right away if somebody hovers or does something to that object. I'm going to type in 1s for one second. Now, this is just the generic or standard property transition. We do need to put in a bunch of uh, what are called vendor prefixes in here to get this to work as well. So what we'll do, and I need to put my semicolon at the end, sorry, is we're going to copy this and we need to put a bunch of vendor prefixes for the different browsers, like let's say WebKit. And then we'll paste. It's the same thing. We're just going to go in and say, okay, for Mozilla, paste. We've got one for Opera. They all have their different uh, vendor prefixes. Okay, now this is going to work for most browsers. IE, except for IE 10, pretty much, is kind of out of the question right now. But this is what's going to happen. Now what we need to do is we need to say, okay, when somebody hovers over this bigger box, I want you to change the inner box, and we're going to tell it what property to change. Okay, so I'll make another style here, and we'll do this. We'll say, okay, when somebody hovers over the box, so dot box colon hover, I want you to change the inner box. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go in and say, okay, let's take the background position or the, the position of the object maybe and reposition it. So we'll put bottom, whoops, zero. 
Now, here's something I need to fix. You're going to see right here that we have bottom of minus 60 in the initial inner box, which puts it way out here, and it's being hidden. If we say hover over the main box, set the inner box to the bottom position of zero, meaning pull it up. Well, in our transition right here, you're going to see that we told it to change the background, which is stupid because there is no background change here. What we need to do is we need to either set it to the property that is going to change. So you're telling it, hey, the bottom property, and we need to change it for all these. The bottom property is going to change, and here's how it's going to work, and here's what the actual value is. If we had something like a bunch of other properties, I'll show you this in a second, we could set this to all. But anyway, let's give this a try. So I'm in live here. I'll click over here. Hover over and you'll see what happens. There we go. Cool. I'll move out. It's going back. Now, it's doing a delay of one second. If we put this to zero or you get rid of it totally, you could do that too. The default is actually zero, I believe. I think over here. Try it out. You'll see what happens. So we're getting the slide in, slide out. Now suppose we want to try something else. I want to try something like, uh, let's do the background color as well. Right now, the background is white. So what we can do is if I come down here, I could say, you know what? Let's change the background color when it slides in. I'm going to do something like RGBA. This is a newer CSS3 type thing. And we're going to keep it white. But what this allows us to do is to set alpha. So we can set a transparency. So you're going with RGB values, red, green, blue. It's between 0 and 255. And then between 0 and 1, 1 being completely opaque. OK. The problem is, is that we're telling it just to transition the bottom value. So the background's going to be ignored. It's going to literally transfer directly to that. OK. So it's not going to be, there's not going to be any transition between it. So it's just going to happen. See that? Bam. Just happens. What we need to do is we need to say, hey, I want you to also, and we can string in a bunch here. I can put a comma and then put, I want you to also do the background. And then we set up, let's say it's going to take one second for that. It's going to ease in. We can set some different things here and take zero. And then we need to change that for all of them. So I'm just, I get lazy here. I'm going to copy and paste all this. So copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Like I said, we're saying, okay, on the browser, I want you to take the bottom property. We're going to do this to it. Then I want you to take the background property, and we're going to do this to it. And it, it does it simultaneously, essentially. So if I come in here and do this, you'll see what it does. So cool. Nice. If you want to just be simple, and the only reason why we actually separate these out like this and put commas is because if you want the different transition properties, like let's say duration, timing, that sort of thing, to be different. If you want it all to be the same, you can just do this. This is actually a, a nice shorthand way to do it. Let me get rid of all this stuff. Bam, bam, bam. Do, 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 do. Sorry. Instead of telling it what property we want to transition, we can just say all. Do everything. So everything that changes in the, let's say, the hover or the click or whatever we happen to have, just change them all. That makes it easy. There we go. Now, if I preview that in Internet Explorer 9, you're not going to see this, this inner content box. It's not going to show up at all because it can't transition. It doesn't understand this transition. So what we would have to do, and by the way, I know I've got this style internal to the document. Some of you are probably like, what are you doing? It's just to keep it together. Okay, Normally, I would obviously put this in an external style sheet. But what we could do is we could put in some conditional statements or a conditional statement that says, hey, if it's earlier than IE10, that's what this says, I want you to do something different. So what we might do is, you know, something like this. I'll just cheat. I'll get all, get rid of all the transition stuff. We don't need that. It doesn't work anyway. And then we'll just say, hey, for the bottom, just set it at zero. We can change the color itself of the, of the text. We can do different things. But it's just going to show. It's not going to, like, transition or anything. So essentially, instead of getting this cool thing, we will get something like this. It'll just show up. Okay, and I changed the color of the text to black right there, or at least dark gray. So using conditional, we can get IE to at least do something. And this is not the only way to do this. Some people hate conditional statements. You can use Modernizer. I mean, there's a billion ways to do this. You script, you jQuery, a lot of ways to get it done. But anyway, I'll show you the code again. This is pretty simple. You can take this really far, this transition stuff really far. Uh, but this is a shorthand property to write it out, shorthand way to write it out and just getting a couple different things to work. So hopefully that makes sense.